so this is where we are in our list app right now. The app opens up and you have a blank screen with the floating action button. You click the button and it takes you to the other intent or to the other activity with an intent that has an edit text and a button with no action. So the first thing we're going to need to do to start adding functionality to our app is create a list for the notes to be stored in. That's done like this. We're going to go ahead and create a new array list of strings. Call it notes. Set that equal to a new array list. Not that. Well, it's all been imported for us. So then, in our own create, actually, we can go ahead and delete all this shared preferences stuff right now. This was just for testing in one of the last videos. So then, in our own create, we're going to make a new list view. We're going to go back to our content main.xml and we're going to check what the ID on that list view is. If it's nothing, then we're going to just set it to list view. It's main activity. Great. And now we have new list view set up. So <clears throat> We're going to add an example note to the notes array list. And create an array adapter for the list view so that we're able to add all of the notes and list items into the uh, list view. That's just a default styling that comes built in with Android for the list. Um, just use that or any of the other ones that you think looks nice. Um, so, And then we have to pass the data set that's going to go into the list view. That's going to be notes. Then we take our list view and set the adapter. to array adapter. So now if we go ahead and run this, just use instant run. If we go ahead and run this, we should see a new list, or the list that will be populated with example note right here. So now that it's run, you see that our list view, which is actually shifted a little bit too far down, has been loaded with a note said, let's call it example note. So now that that's been created, we need to set a listener so that when a user clicks on the note, it transitions them to the other activity where they can then edit it or delete it or change whatever they want to do. So that's done like this. List view dot set on item click listener. That'll be new adapter view dot, see it already puts in all the code for you. It's a nice boilerplate code there. And now, you don't really have to worry about many of these variables, except this one. This is the position in the list of the item that was clicked. So we're just going to change this to position. In position, there we go. So we want to go to the other activity when this is clicked. So we do it like this. Remember, the other class is called edit note. Dot class. 
And we're going to have to put a little extra bit of information. In this case, it will be the position of the node ID. That is done like this. You intent to put extra, give it a tag. So I'm going to call it node ID. That's what's going to be used to identify our note in the other activity and give it position. And we're going to start the activity. Great. In the other activity, we're going to want to set the value of the text field to whatever the value of this note was. So well, first, we're going to need to give the edit text an ID. So go over to content edit note.xml, find your edit text. All right, it's called edit text already. Great. So in the on create of your edit note, you're going to want to do this. Create a new edit text. Then you're going to need to get the intent that started this one, and that's done like this. I'm going to call this I instead of intent, just for brevity's sake. And to make a global variable called note ID as well. And this is how you get something that was passed to the intent, like this. Get if you see over here in main activity where you said intent up put extra. To get that extra bit of information, you use get extra, and you have to specify the data type. Now this is called note ID, and the default value is going to be negative one because it's never going to be negative one in the list. So this is how we'll know if nothing was passed over and there was some kind of error. So if the value is not negative one, meaning something was passed over, we're going to want to set the value of edit text, this guy right here. Emulator is being a little laggy, but the edit text that pops up in the next activity, we're gonna to wanna to set that to the value of the note. Yeah, this right here. So do that like this. It's not equal to negative one. I'm going to call the string filler text. Now you see we have a little error here when getting notes from main activity. That's because if you want to access variables from other activities, they have to be static. So we're going to go ahead and make notes static. Static just means that it's not going to change throughout the program. So you see it moved the declaration of notes up here and named it as static. We're going to go and set the value of the edit text to filler text. You know, save a line, we could just take all this stuff and move it down into the set text field, but I think it looks better this way. So now, when you run your app, so you already ran a test here. Um, when you run the app, you'll be able to click on a note. And when it pops up, you'll be able to edit it, add, sec add text and whatnot. But you'll see when you go back to your main activity, another note is added. We'll sort that out later. I'm not too worried about it right now. But being able to edit notes is not much good if you can't save them. So what we're going to need to do is save all the notes. <clears throat> to do that, we need to add a text watcher to the edit text. I think the best way to do this is when the user types automatically save. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm 
context is going to be this because it's for this activity. You see we have a little error here. We need to make edit note implement Android text dot text watcher. That'll give us a couple handy methods that will come in very good use. Now, as you see, we have before text changed, on text changed, and after text changed. I think the most useful here is going to be on text change. So that's the one we're going to do most of our logic in. What we're going to need to do here is update the notes data set with the new value of it. So we're going to go up here, copy this code just for simplicity's sake. But now instead of editing, instead of getting node ID, we are going to be setting it. So we go like this. This is the data, this is what we're going to be setting. And then what are we going to be setting it to? It is the char sequence, which is the new value of edit text. We get that with string dot value of char sequence. And now all we need to do is update the array adapter. Let it know that the data set has been changed like this. It's going to have to be static too in a second. Oh, it's not letting me do that. All right, I'm going to have to do that manually now. So we're just going to go back to the main activity where we declared array adapter. Delete that and declare it up here under the static array list. Perfect. Now we should no longer have this error here. Great, love to see that. Now we need to make sure that the notes are saved permanently. So we're gonna go back to our main activity and create a new shared preferences object. So under the list view here, we are going to go shared preferences. Get our package name. I'm going to call it go with node private so only our app can access the notes. And now when we add stuff to shared preferences, there's a couple ways we can do that. <clears throat> we go like this. We can put string, boolean, float, int, long. The best, the, what we're going to want to do here is put a string set. That's going to be essentially a set of strings, and I'll show you guys how to do that right now. Actually, let's hold off on this for a second. There's a couple things we need to do first. So we're, gonna, we're going to be accessing this set, which is very much like an array list, just used for shared preferences. It's easier to conversion. We're going to be using this in both activities, so we're going to go ahead and make this static. set of strings. We're going to call this just set. So that's declared now as both a static variable and a global variable. So <clears throat> we're going to need to get the set. That's the first thing we're going to do. Like when the app's open, we're going to try to get all the nodes that were stored in the set if there are any. So we do that like this. These are the shared preferences we just created. Get string set. We're going to get the note string set. And just give it the default value of null. Because if it's not created yet, if there's no notes in it, that's what it's going to be. And we're going to clear notes because that will that should remedy this error that when we go back and forth between activities, the new example note gets created. Notes dot clear. And remember, this is, notes is not the one that's saved. That's just our local list. 
So, after notes.clear, we're going to check if our set is equal to null, like this. We're actually going to go if it's not equal to null. This will work better for this. Set is not equal to null. Sorry, I forgot to write null. Notes dot add all set. So briefly, I'm going to explain what this is doing. So if set is not null, it has notes in it already. We want to add everything, all the notes that are stored in this set in shared preferences to our local notes array list, which is stored in the app and will let us display them all to the user. However, if set is null, we're going to need to initialize some stuff so that the user will be able to add new notes. Else, this is where we're going to want to move our example note to. We're also going to have to create set. <clears throat> it's actually called a hash set of strings. We're now going to add all the notes, which at this point will just include example note. And now we're going to want to save this to the shared preferences. So just in case there's anything that was saved there beforehand by some extraneous error, we're going to want to remove all of the notes from shared preferences. So we don't get um, any things being double saved or triple saved, etc. Now we're going to want to put all the new notes that are in the set to shared preferences. And then remember we have to apply it. <clears throat> the only other place we're really going to need to access shared preferences would be right here when the notes are being edited. So what we're going to do here is very much the same as what we're doing right here. We're now going to need to get our shared preferences for main activity. We're just going to recreate that down here in the on text change listener. Yep. Okay, do that. We're also going to check if set is equal to null again. So we got here. So this is asking basically if it's my set from main activity and I'm going to click Alt Enter to say yes. So now that's created set as a static variable. Again, so I don't have to type in main activity dot like here, like I have to do here. I just refer to it as set. Yeah. One of the nice things about Android Studio is that it does a lot of that stuff for you. I'm just going to go create this again. Set is not equal to null. We're going to want to clear it. Great. Now down here, it's literally the same thing that we're doing up here. Right down here. So we're going to Copy all this, go over to our editnote.java and throw it in there. Just put another set.clear here just, just in case. Okay, great. Now that should handle the saving of all our new notes. While we're all here on editnote.java, one little buggy thing I noticed earlier is that I haven't rerun this, so it's not going to have any of our new functionality yet. But whenever you start typing, the text, the keyboard here covers our floating action button. So I did a quick Google search for something that could fix that. 
And lo and behold, I found this nifty little bit of code right here that will edit the action bar of, of this activity so that you will be able to show the floating action button in response to where the keyboard is in the app. In our manifest.xml, we're going to want to go find the edit note activity. And under theme, I'm going to paste this little bit in. So what this is going to do is find the soft input mode, which is the soft keyboard, and adjust all the floating action buttons, ever, adjust everything to resize around it. So what this essentially does is when the soft keyboard pops up, it compacts the rest of the view so that you can still see all the other view elements instead of having them hidden by the keyboard. Now, one more thing we need to do is in our main activity under our floating action button. So let's find where that guy is. So right now, all it really does is start, the new, start a new activity using an intent. But we want, really want to create a new note doing that. So we're going to have to add a little bit of code in here. We're going to start by just adding a blank text field to the set notes. Now, since a lot of what we're going to be doing here is very much the same as what we're doing when we're editing the text here, we can copy all of this. And just plop it in here under notes.add. Take this guy out for here. So let's run through what we're doing here really quickly. Uh, this is not going to work. Okay. So because we're in the floating action button, this is referring to well, the floating action button on Click Listener. We're going to need to get the application context. Great, so what we're doing, we're taking the array list notes and adding a blank note to it. We're getting a new instance of shared preferences. We're checking if our set is equal to null. If it is, we're creating a new one. If it's not, we're clearing it so we can add new notes. Now we're going to add all the notes. I think we should all be good thus far. <clears throat> now, again, so we don't have any double note adding errors. If you want to see what this does after you make the app, you can go ahead and delete this line I'm about to write and every other instance of it and just see how notes are added multiple times. <clears throat> We're going to remove all the notes from shared preferences and apply that. Now, because all the notes are shared uh, locally in a string set, we're going to add all those. Can't forget the little parentheses there. Now we just have to notify the array adapter. <clears throat> now you see, this is basically everything. The one more thing we're going to have to do is pass a small extra bit of information to the new activity. Essentially, what node has been created. So we're going to go. See what I call it. I call this one intent. All right, intent dot put extra note ID. And now let's figure out how are we going to know which note has been created. Well, it's going to be the size of the notes array <clears throat> minus one because arrays go. F the first one starts at zero, and this is going to be the final one in the set. So it's going to be notes dot size minus one. Great. So now you can probably see how this will link up seamlessly with what we have over here, which takes the node ID in 
And when this is started, it gets from the new intent, gets node ID. And then edits the note, I mean, saves the note as the user edits it. So the one final thing we're gonna to need to do to polish off this app is to allow users to delete notes. And we're going to do that by letting them hold down on a list view item and then pop up a little alert that'll let them delete it. So we're gonna do that like this. Okay, go to where you have your list view that's set on item, click listener. Right below that, we're gonna do a new on item long click listener, like this. And now after that, we're going to need a new adapter view that on item long click listener, similar to up here, up right here, on item click listener. Perfect, it adds all that in for us. <clears throat> So now we are going to need to build a new alert dialog that will pop up the alert to delete the note. Alert dialog builder, alt enter, work. <clears throat> and now we're going to pass it the context of main activity dot, main activity dot this. So alert dialogs take a few, they pass in a few variables that they can use. So the first one is going to be the icon. We're going to set this to the alert dialog icon. It's just the default one and that's done like this. And there we go. That looks like a little triangle with an exclamation point in the middle. Oops, I can't have that there. We're, gonna, we're now going to set the title to, are you sure? So ask the user if they really want to delete the note. I'm going to set the message to, do you want to delete this item? Set the positive button to yes. Let's make that capital. And if the user clicks yes, we need a new on click listener for this. And it's done with a dialogue interface because this is a dialogue interface. Already anticipates that and you need to put a little semicolon down there. So on click, we're going to remove, let's call this position, because this is again the position, the new. No, this is not the position, I'm sorry. This is the position up here. That's the position of the item that was clicked. And since we're accessing it from an inner method, we're gonna to need to declare this as final as well. So we're gonna to need to remove position. And create the shared preferences again. I'm getting tired of writing this, I'm just going to copy it. And now we're going to use that code again where we check if the set is null. If it is, we create a new hash set. If it's not, we clear it. <clears throat> And then we add all the main activity notes to set. We remove all the notes from shared preferences. We add all the new notes to shared preferences. And then we update the array adapter. It's all the same code we used when the user creates a new note. So instead of, I'm just going to paste that down here. Sorry guys, that was my mom saying hi. But anyway, 
So what we need to do here is literally the same thing. So think about this. When you remove the position from notes right here, the locally saved notes list is not going to have that noted in anymore. So you then clear the set, add all of the notes to the set again, which will be minus the one that you just deleted. Remove all, this shared, all the saved notes from shared preferences, which is the old data set. Add all the new ones, which is going to be minus this guy right here. And then notify your array adapter. So the next thing we're going to have to do is set the negative button. Oh, crud, where'd that go? So instead of a semicolon here, that was, I'm sorry, my pad. It's kind of late. We're going to set the negative button. to no, and then null, because we don't want anything to happen here. There's no listener. No. And then we have to, of course, show it. And now we're going to return true. Not liking this, what did I do wrong here? You know, we don't even really need this in here, so I'm just going to take this out. It's fine, turning void. So, anyway, let's go ahead and run this app. I just ran it actually, did a test, pause the video. So, what this does now is let's add a note, let's say, hi there. Ooh, that's one thing we need have left to do. So you can also just click the back button here. These will now be saved if you restart the app. If you long press on this and let up, you can click yes to delete it. And you will be able to close the app, open it up, and it'll be gone. So let's just go do that last thing very quickly where we let the user navigate back to the main activity with this button here, just for simplicity's sake. All the logic and saving notes has really already been done, so we just need to start a new intent and go back to the main activity. Where are you? Floating action button. All right, let's delete this snack bar here. Just paste in code for an intent back to the main activity. Can go ahead and run that. And I'm happy to say that is the last thing you need to do on your notes app. Congrats, guys. So now we can add a note. Say hello. And click this guy to go back to the main activity. That's it. We're done. Hope you learned a lot and had a good time doing it.